Well, hello. Welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I am pleased to kind of give you a little update on a few things with our plans at the Bonson Group this year. We want to today do our normal video, go through kind of the things most on our mind and, and kind of what you're accustomed to from this roughly five to ten minute video we do every week. I do want to announce a brand new Advice and Insights podcast that we've started um, I started it yesterday. You can find it on the web, iTunes, Google Play, all that kind of stuff. Um, the initial uh, podcast launch was on the theme of the political landscape, uh, about a 45-minute uh, podcast talk that I did around everything happening in the political world and what that means to your portfolio. Um, we want to keep these videos shorter and so we're not going to go to that longer form 30 to 45 minute talk, but we do have a lot of interest in that on a podcast level. So uh, get ready for more of that um, at Advice and Insights podcast. For those who are used to getting this material from our uh, podcast at Dividend Cafe, just a, a, again, kind of a regurgitation of what we are uh, genu generally um, writing each week at DividendCafe.com, that podcast will continue as well. So I don't mean to confuse you with things, but we just want to have a whole menu of ways that people can get our thought leadership, our point of view. For those that really like getting it from this video, it's mostly Facebook viewers. There's some who watch it from YouTube, but we're going to continue doing it and hopefully find ways to be giving you the content that you want scratching the itches you have about investment markets and things of that nature. Um, next week, I do plan to sort of summarize our 2017 recap and 2018 forecast. I've created a pretty lengthy white paper I've been working on for about three weeks. It's posted at our website now at thebonsongroup.com. A lot of charts and, and things like that. But look, we have a very specific... Uh, point of view right now as to how we want to see our clients positioned and there's a lot of nuance around that so we're going to delve deeper into that next week we'll do it on the video there'll be a full podcast on it and then of course we'll have the written form and, and like I said that white paper itself for those of you that still enjoy reading as much as I do is available on our website um, what I want to talk about a little today here on the video now getting down to brass tacks is the significance of Dow 25,000 there's a lot of things people can get wrong about this subject, and, and I think that probably most dangerously is to assume that it means more than it does, um, to assume that all of a sudden hitting this sort of round figure uh, milestone number, the Dow has not only hit 25,000, gone well past it. As I'm sitting here talking, we're at 25,400. Uh, we've been up six of the last seven days and, and, you know, everything is right now very bullish for equity markets and most risk assets. So to, to assume that that means all of a sudden more investors are going to pour in because we hit this number. And so it represents a kind of way to ride a wave even further. I would vehemently disagree with that. I don't think it has any such significance that is investable like I didn't like equities at 24,990, but now at 25,000, I like it. And, and for whatever kind of concoction someone comes up with, I think it's kind of silly, actually. Um, but on the other hand, to say that Dow 25,000 means nothing, I'm uncomfortable with as well, because I do think there's some symbolic significance, particularly for those, which is most of us, most of you, out of the decade of 2000 to 2010 bookended by two of the nastiest bear markets in history. This uh, brutal dot-com crash and 9-11 and my minor recession bear market that, that kicked off the new uh, decade and new millennium for that matter. And then, of course, the Great Recession and the housing and financial and credit crisis that lasted from 2008 to 2009. I would suggest that... Um, Dow 25,000 is a tremendous vindication of those who maintained a belief in the earnings power of well-run companies, who maintained a belief in the historical outperformance of the equity risk premium. 
meaning those that are willing to take on the added volatility of equities with all of its psychological and emotional discomfort, that they achieve a superior rate of return through time to bondholders and cash holders. And that that Dow 25,000 is a nice round number, uh, not an unexpected one. It's frankly a mathematical result from the compounding of earnings and cash flows that takes place through time in a private enterprise economy. So uh, from our vantage point, Dow 25,000 is significant, but it has pretty much no bearing on what happens into the future. And that, of course, ought to be our focus. Do I think we'll see Dow 30,000 before Dow 20,000? That's a good question. I, um, I really do believe it could go either way. I see nothing imminent. Uh, you can do the math. A 5,000-point drop at this point would be 20%. That would be a bear market. That would bring us back down to Dow 20,000. To have a bear market, I believe you have to have a recession. I think we will have another recession, but I think it will be a uh, point out into the future, perhaps several years away, maybe less than that. And so more than likely, I, I wouldn't forecast it. But markets have a way of humbling us. And that's part of that equity risk premium I alluded to. But here's one thing I do know, um, and I write about this uh, pretty vehemently at DividendCafe.com this week. The ash heap of history where these perma-bear newsletter writer, fear-mongering charlatans belong, unfortunately, the folks that make their living scaring people and predicting outlandish things that they're never held accountable to, that, by the way, they have no skin in the game on and their own forecasts, no real money there, they're making money telling other people stupid things, but they're not investing accordingly. If they are, they'd be out of business by now, obviously. The reality is, is that those people don't have to go away because there is a permanent and unending supply of people with a sociological or psychological precondition to want to hear bad news. Bears, perma-pessimists, always have the advantage of sounding intellectually superior or novel. Um, and what happens through time is that they're wrong, 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 wrong. Then you have an inevitable cyclical correction, and then they come out of the woodwork. And yet, the math of it is such that they were so far off of what they had forecasted all along, the victory lap is not just disingenuous, it's offensive and stupid. Um, so... Yes, I do have strong opinions about that particular charlatan class of people because I think that they've done a lot of damage to, to very well-meaning people and sincere investors that deserve to have their financial needs looked after in a better way than by, by uh, such pedestrian um, kooks. But here, here's the thing I want to kind of close with. Equities right now have a lot of momentum but they have a lot of fundamental strength as well. And the two things are not always aligned. Momentum can shift in a second. The fundamentals generally speak to a much firmer foundational basis for, for how uh, an asset class is performing in time. Right now, I believe that we are moving for quickly through the various innings of what has been a heck of a bull market. Um, but that we were in early innings for a long time. We took a good pause. I don't think we're in the ninth inning of it as far as the secular bull market, which is one for the ages, the one that I frankly am, am extremely proud of how the Bonson Group has invested throughout. But I all, uh, because there's been a lot of risk that's been existent throughout this bull market, risk that needed to be respected, risk that needed to be diversified away, risk that needed to be monitored through use of alternatives and asset allocation and fixed income, tactical weightings, the different things one would do at any given point in time. Uh, the news cycle can change, sentiment can change, uh, monetary conditions can change, geopolitical events can surface, black swan events are the hardest thing to invest around, obviously. So tail risk has been there, but the reality is is that equities have done what equities should have done as corporate America and, in fact, foreign uh, companies as well in more recent times have accelerated earnings 
Um, we're not just talking about six months, 12 months, 18 months, but going back nine years now, the earnings growth in the S&P 500 tremendously rationalizes much of this market advance. Um, I think that we have to deal with the reality that when more people like what's happening in equities, the risk premium becomes suppressed. So the popularity of stocks right now is not something I am enjoying. I think most of you probably are because your portfolios are going higher and you like that. But I'm a permanent buyer and I love it when there's a lot of skepticism and pessimism because as a contrarian, I know that greater money is made in those periods of time. And I take that seriously, not only as an investor for myself and my family, but I mean, I'm speaking in my professional capacity, managing client capital. So it's harder to make money when, when there's a lot of euphoria. We're not topped out on euphoria yet. There's still uh, far too much skepticism out there. And a lot of the real maniacal euphoria is going into other things like Bitcoin and stuff like that. But look, the fundamentals are there. 2018 is going to be a very interesting year. We obviously need to allocate that blend of risk and non-risk assets to a particular client's uh, profile and to a client's need and personality and tolerance and liquidity profile and things of that nature. But as far as our broad view on the market, um, we think Dow 25,000 is a great number and we certainly think Dow 30,000 is gonna happen as well. We wouldn't dare time it. Wouldn't time correction, wouldn't time Dow 30,000 uh, and nor can anybody else and hopefully they'll be honest enough to tell you that. I'm going to leave it there for the week. I've gone on pretty long. Uh, yeah, almost 12 minutes here. That's long enough. Reach out with any questions anytime. Look forward to delivering our full 2018 positioning next week on this video of Dividend Cafe. Check out any of the other uh, menu items we have to deliver our content. Subscribe where you will. And thanks again.